Let's give you a couple little tips and tricks about doing a remodel workflow using the Pro Plan for X16. I'm just going to go in here and do a few things to this model just to make it distinguished as an as built, if you will. Throw in a couple windows in here and then let's just model in a room or two, just like so. And right off the bat let's just say i'm done with modeling the as built i'm ready to start working on the new that's my um my workflow is before i even start thinking about demo i like to just kind of play around with new i already understand the structure of the existing in this case so i, I want to start playing around with new so here's what i do is finally get to a point where i'm going to save so i'm going to save this and there's one important thing about how you save this you want to make sure that you have dash AB in the name for as built. So dash AB in the name. Once you do that, the pro plan actually knows now that this is an as built and the pro layout does as well. So it does some of the annotations for you. You might not even need to know that it's doing that. It just is. You might just see a label and go, hey, that's a good label. It looks like what it should be. That's because of that name right there. So that dash AB is important. That's part of this item up here. You can see now is existing is true. Anything else is considered false. So as soon as you put dash AB, it's true. And you wanna make sure you don't do anything to this. This is actually a line. So don't delete this because that removes the condition. But there we go, that's all we needed to do. So now I'm done saving the Asbel. I wanna work on the new. This is exactly how I would do it in a real workflow, which is as soon as I save the as built, I now need to resave it as new before I start working on it. So I'm just going to put example dash n for new. There we go. And if you do add dash n in pro layout, it knows to put proposed. Well, at least it did in a previous version. I haven't checked on that in a while, but it should know to put proposed. If you don't put dash new, then you're in a new construction workflow and we're not going to put proposed. It's just proposed is assumed in a new construction workflow. So here we go. Now I've got my new plan file and I'm going to use the tools in my toolbar that come with the pro plan, which is I've got a new exterior wall and new interior wall. Now, if we double click on this tool, it's going to actually tell you that this is pointing to a library item. And if you open that library item or let's just rather draw with the tool in this matter, let's say that this is going to be an addition now. I'm going to open up this wall and what you're going to see here is what designates this as a new wall is just that it's on a layer called walls exterior, which is different from the default exterior wall. So the fill style for this wall can change depending on what plan view you're on. So if we change the fill style of this right now, uh, let's just go walls exterior. We're going to change it to neon green or something like that. You'll notice that in our print views, which are our regular views over here, not the working views like floor plan, it doesn't actually affect the color of the wall in this particular view. So if you like more dynamic colors to really help you distinguish new versus existing, you could set that up in the working plan view. That part's pretty easy. So now we see that we've got an addition here. I'm gonna do something real quick. Let's just move over to the sidebar and I'm gonna get you to project information. And I want to have this open on the side. And I'm going to show you something. We'll put this side by side. Right now, we can see that something is, in fact, happening, right? Some, some kind of calculations being done here. What I want you to notice is that new coverage is set to zero. And we cover this in a different video. But new coverage is set to zero. All I need to do is open up this room and say that this room is going to be an addition. And that other video expands on this, but now that adds to our new coverage, right? So there we go. It's very clear that I've got an addition here now. Now something else that I could do to distinguish this from the as-built, and let's just open up both now. Let's open up that as-built. I can open recent files, go to as-built. I'm going to reference. So I'm gonna click over here, reference display, and then I'm gonna change my floor or reference. I'm going to go ahead and since I both have I have both of these uh, files open, I can choose that other file example new. I'm going to say the floor is just going to match the current floor. And then I like to switch to the existing floor plan set. And that just adds a dashed line. And you can see that it's overlaid over the top. 
If I wanted to, I could come in here and change floor reference and move it down. I could do that, or we could check X over R, and that's going to pick up that, hey, anything that's overlapping, we're not going to do anything with it. Anything that's not overlapping, hey, we're going to show it uh, using your uh, layer set that you've chosen. So here it's really clear where our addition is. Why might I want that? Well, I'm in the as built now. It might be nice to come in here with some wall hatching and say, hey, I want to hatch this wall, and then with the tool still active, I'm able to select that hatch and bring it. To where my addition is and I'm going to say that I'm going to remove this wall right so here's what I get to do I get to use the annotation tool which is just in this first toolbar here and it's in another toolbar in the sidebar I can place this in our plan now and it's going to say flooring to be determined there's the annotation tool it's going to pick that up but we're going to attach this we're going to attach it to a wall now and look at that hatching denotes wall to be removed I set this up in my label options project label options right here and so that's coming from options right here annotation tool for existing all right so keep that in mind because if you want to change how this is read you can see here wall for existing hatching note hatching denotes wall to be removed so you can change that on the fly set this up the way that you'd like that just seems to be really easy for me the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to say that hey let's just call this the living room and we're going to say, we're not doing any work here, right? So we've got this other tool that's in our toolbar that is the no work room style palette. We get to spray this room, which says now no work. And because we're in an existing plan, we could spray these two windows. And it's going to add that this is a window type that is to be removed. So really quick and easy way to annotate here. Could also use the annotation tool here to say, hey, we're going to demo this floor and let's copy this over again and grab this. I believe it even works on Windows. Windows to be removed. Look at that. So very quickly we're getting to an as built where it's a demolition plan, right? So another condition that you can do is you can always take uh, some window and put it on the space demo layer and it will also automatically do these things to the window so if we wanted to we could use the paint sprayer and this is the layer paint sprayer pick the very first layer which is demo and we can spray this window and you're going to see that there we go and it makes it disappear just note that that's going to affect the annotation tool but really you'd be using one or the other so it shouldn't be too big of a deal there but there it's really really clear that we're removing this section and of course you could reference the existing back to the new right so we know that this portion of wall is going to be removed including these windows i broke that up correctly there we go right and so maybe we have some new interior wall or something like that new dividing interior wall or something like that so you could always come in here turn on a reference and reference reference that as built and switch to match floor and then switch this to the existing floor plan now keep in mind this order right here is not alphabetical that's a glitch chief knows about it they're going to fix it so maybe by the time you see this video they already fixed that here we go we referenced that as built in this view as well and i'm just going to do that x over r again kind of like that look there we go so very clear that we've got a demo wall here right now one thing to note is since we um, put in some labels in that existing view they're coming through in this plan right and they're actually picking up the macros from this plan as as they're being displayed so it would be good to isolate this to a true demo demolition plan as opposed to that existing plan and just turn those layers off. All right, so I'm going to turn that reference view off. Let's show you a couple additional tricks. Let's just say that this is our addition. Now, in a roof framing plan, sometimes we can do something like make this an isolated roof group, or you might be that you're framing over the roof, right? So I'm going to move to the working roofs only view here. And in this case, let's just say I'm going to extend this hip, but on this side, I might actually just frame over. Or let's just make this a little bit more detailed. I'm going to switch back to that working plan view. And we're going to say that the addition is only going to be right here. We'll bring this down. I want to make sure that it's centered up here. All right, so there's my new addition. Let's switch over to that working roof. 
I'm going to say that these are a frame over condition, right? And so in that case, this roof plane needs to come back down here. And I'm going to turn auto build roofs off. And then I'm going to select these two roofs, open them up. And in the structure panel, I'm going to say, hey, roof over framing, okay? And I'm going to build it to the sheathing. Now let me select all these roofs. And this is my new roof, right? This is my uh, um, additions roof. So I'm going to build the framing for this roof. I don't need to turn on the layers of this. I can switch to a different view. Or you could turn on the layers. It doesn't matter. I'm going to come over to the framing roof plan. And I'm going to grab one of these rafters. And I'm going to uh, marquee select similar. And then select all similar. And I'll open them up. And in the line style, I'm going to mouse wheel down one time. That'll take it to roof rafters new. That means it's putting it on its own layer, which means I can isolate the framing from other uh, framing layers. Same kind of thing. I'm going to take this valley plate. I'll do that marquee select similar, select all similar. Let's open this up and we'll just throw that into the new. There we go. So from here, I'm going to come into this floor and we're just going to say that this is a new section of floor. Maybe I'll put in a, a little room divider in there. Let me just get back to the working plan. We'll throw in a little room divider in here. Just like this. And we're going to say that this is our, we're going to frame this separately here. So there we go. I'm just going to build all framing for this. Um, it's saying that the, or platform extends into adjacent rooms, would you like to create a new framing group for this selected? I'm gonna say yes. So what that's doing then is it, we're, we're putting you know some kind of split bearing in here, all right? So we're changing the framing group. I don't need to display anything. I can come to a different view to display that. And then the last thing I might do is I might come in here, build all the framing for the walls. I don't need to display that either. I come to a different framing view if I'd like. I want to isolate these things. So if I come to framing floor plan view and I drop down a level, we're going to see here's all our new framing members. I could, of course, do that select marquee all, select all similar, and then flip this down. I might need to make a new one for this. I don't often show this on a new. So I have to do define. We just make a copy. And of course, you can just add new on this. So that will isolate those as well. Once we've isolated all these things, you can kind of build the rest of the project if you'd like to, right? So we can build all framing because these other things are just on their own isolated layers. So I've got a couple different layer sets that you could use here. This is framing, 3D framing new construction. We roll it down and now it's remodel. So I would actually take these three roof planes and throw these three roof planes on roof planes new, which I just scrolled down one, right? So now it clearly shows us, especially with a line over drawing that, hey, this is new versus existing. That's a really simple thing to understand right there. This is how we're gonna tie in the roof, etc. Really great way of isolating the, the two. I think that's about as far as I wanna go for one video in explaining um, an as-built versus new construction or as-built versus remodel workflow in the pro plan. Um, and maybe we'll expand on this in some future videos.